First of all, from Rovio Entertainment, Peter Vestavaka to give us the special session. Yeah, good afternoon. And it's really great to be back here at NEST. So uh, it's actually not my first time, it's my third time here uh, at NEST in Tokyo. And it's always great event, uh, great people, and, and uh, uh, one of my favorite events of all, all year. So today uh, I thought I'll talk a little bit about Angry Birds, but also about something that is very important and close to my heart, uh, startups and entrepreneurship. So uh, if we start with Angry Birds, uh, so yeah, when I'm the mighty eagle uh, of Rovia, so uh, one of the characters in the game. And uh, people always ask me that, what does that mean? You know, uh, when I hand out my business card and it says, Peter, mighty eagle. Uh, so actually what it means is, just like in the game, that uh, if you get stuck on a difficult level, what do you do? You call in the mighty eagle and the mighty eagle clears the level in one shot. So it's kind of like a silver bullet. And that describes my job as well. Tend to get involved in uh, very interesting kind of like different projects. If you look at Angry Birds, uh, today uh, a lot of people know Angry Birds, the red bird. And we even have a movie coming a bit later in the year. But uh, Angry Birds actually started uh, when, or I should say Rovio, the company got started over 10 years ago. In 2003, a uh, couple of students from Aalto University, Niklas and his friends, they took part in a game making competition. Game making competition that I organized when I was working for HP, Hewlett Packard, you know, the original Silicon Valley startup, now a big corporation. But anyway, uh, organized a game-making competition. Niklas and his friends took part in that. And uh, they created a game called uh, King of the Cabbage World. Uh, you haven't heard about that because it kind of like it's a game that never came out. But the important thing is they won the competition. And after the competition, they came to me and asked me that, OK, uh, we created this game. Uh, we won the competition. What should we do? And I said that. I have always believed that you should do what you love to do, what you're passionate about. And it was very clear that Nicholas and the guys loved playing games, but they also loved making games. So I suggested that, okay, why don't you start a company to make games? It's easy. Okay, it turned out not to be so easy. This was in 2003, way before iPhone, Android, uh, and it actually then took six years, 51 games, 11th of December 2009, Angry Birds came out. It was the 52nd game uh, that Rovio made. So not exactly like an overnight success story, unless you consider six years and 51 other games uh, overnight. But then uh, rest of the experience, and the Angry Birds ride the last six or so years has been amazing. Actually, Angry Birds didn't immediately take off. It took uh, some months before uh, we got to like number one. We started uh, so in Finland, in Helsinki. Uh, we did word of mouth marketing. So we told friends and family that, OK, why don't you download Angry Birds? And in 2009, Finland, home of Nokia, not too many you know, uh, iPhones. That was when Nokia were still making phones. So just telling friends and family to get the game, we became number one in Finland. Then a little bit later, uh, in the early uh, 2010, became number one in Sweden. Then Apple realized that there was something going on, this little game called Angry Birds, and they featured us in the UK, in the US, went to number one and stayed there for over 300 days, which I think is still uh, a record that hasn't been break, uh, broken. But uh, it's very interesting that then 
early on when we had maybe a million or two downloads of Angry Birds, so a lot, uh, very successful, but uh, just a few million, if you will. Uh, I then started telling the team at Rovio and also outside that with Angry Birds, we're going to have 100 million downloads, 100 million copies of the game. And then everybody told me that, Peter, it's impossible. It can't be done. 100 million. Only Tetris has done that. And for Tetris, it took 20 years to get to 100 million. And if you go back to you know, 2010, having 100 million copies of a game was just like impossible, inconceivable, couldn't be done. But then what happened was that in the first 12 months of Angry Birds, so I said very successful, went to number one, we had 50 million downloads, 50 million copies of the game distributed. Massive success, very happy. But this was also when iPhone and Android really took off. Everybody got, or everybody, a lot of people got uh, an iPhone or an Android device for Christmas. So we added 25 million over uh, Christmas. And then in March 2011, we hit our goal of 100 million. The goal that everybody said that it's impossible, can't be done, only Tetris has done it. But we did it in 15 months. And I thought I was very ambitious. You know, 100 million, crazy goal. Everybody told me that I'm crazy. And we got there very, very fast. But reason I wanted to share this and why I think it's important, and of course it's important for any uh, company, any startup, any entrepreneur, you have to be crazy ambitious. And I mean, you have to be a bit crazy uh, to do a startup anyway. I mean, uh, uh, why would any sane person do that when you can just go and have a job at a big company and all of that? But uh, of course, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, we are a bit crazy. We are, we are like that. But uh, the important thing, what happened next, I think was very interesting. Everybody thought 100 million, impossible, can't be done. But then once we got there, oh, it's easy. We can do anything. So you get into a mode where the organization, all the people start believing that, of course, you know, it was impossible, but actually it was easy. So when, when I'm asked that, okay, what is the secret of the success of Angry Birds? You know, if you look at Angry Birds today, we started with the game in 2009. We now have over 3 billion, not million, but billion, the huge B, uh, downloads. 3 billion copies of Angry Birds. So it's the most distributed game ever. But we have also then expanded into other areas. Uh, we bought an animation studio. Our animated shorts have been watched more than 5 billion times. We started our own Toons TV video distribution network, put it in all our games. So it's now one of the biggest video distribution networks on the planet. We expanded into consumer products. So we have a big licensing business, tens of thousands of different Angry Birds branded products. Uh, we're building parks, and as I mentioned before, in May, uh, the first Angry Birds movie is coming out. It's been over for, uh, three years in production, so it's taken us a while. It's an $80 million production, so our biggest project ever. So we started with a little game, and now we built the fastest growing consumer brand ever. 93% of the Chinese population knows the brand. 91% in India. Nine out of ten Americans know the brand. It's actually the only exception to this nine out of ten rule is here in Japan, where we still have a lot of work to get nine out of ten uh, Japanese to know our brand. But we're working on that, and that's also why this is my third time here in Tokyo this year. Uh, but it's, it's very interesting to see then uh, that we started with a game, and we expanded, and we built a brand that is now in the top 10 of all licensed brands, together with all the Disney brands and Hello Kitty from, from Japan. But we're still a very young brand. But what was very interesting then, you know, we got to the 100 million and 
the organization started believing we can do anything. So when I'm asked, okay, what is the secret of the success? Then I say that actually it's very easy. At Rovio, we have over 400 people and they all know how to walk on water. And then I get the same reaction that, hey, Peter, you're crazy. You know, how can you walk on water? And what I mean by that is that they all know that they can walk on water. They can get 100 million downloads for a new game because nobody has proven otherwise. So you believe that you can do it. You don't think it's impossible. So now when I say 100 million downloads, then it's like, okay, how soon? When can we get there? And I think this is something that is very, very important that you have to believe in what you're doing. And then I typically share another little secret that, okay, being from Finland, uh, of course, one uh, enabler there is fantastic education, as we heard from Linda yesterday. Uh, but also in the winter, it gets pretty cold and the water is frozen. So it's very easy to walk on water. First, it sounds difficult, but when it's frozen, it's actually, okay, it's a bit slippery, but you can do it. Then, uh, based on this Angry Birds experience and, you know, impossible being nothing, uh, before Angry Birds, I was actually giving a talk to 600 students at the Aalto University about entrepreneurship, 2007. And I asked them that, okay, how many of you guys are planning to start your own company once you graduate? Or even before. Out of 600 people, three hands went up. Only three were thinking about doing their own startup. I was like, this is a disaster. I mean, future of the nation, you know, if we don't have any entrepreneurs, we're gonna be dead. So uh, we actually then decided to do something about that. And in typical Finnish fashion, uh, you know, we're known for open source. So we did Linux and MySQL and some of these things. Very collaborative. So I, together with some friends, we got uh, some of the most well-known startup uh, founders, entrepreneurs together. And uh, we started a movement. We started an event. And always believed doing things differently. So instead of doing something that you would do in Silicon Valley. We actually decided to do an event when it's not sunny, when it's not nice. We wanted to do something differently. So we started an event called Slush. Cold, dark, slush on the ground, not the Silicon Valley. Better, better because it's different. So we started this Slush event in 2008. 300 people showed up. We had uh, some of uh, famous entrepreneurs, Monty Videni, who started uh, MySQL, Ilkka Paananen, who later then started Supercell, and, and so on, sharing their kind of like experiences of being an entrepreneur. It's all run by volunteers. It's an event by startups for startups, non-profit. And then the movement kind of grew. So if you fast forward five years, that's also actually when Miki Tanisan uh, visited us at Slush. We had 20,000 people. And then when I did a talk to the Aalto University students again, I asked the same question. How many of you will start your own company once you graduate or even before? Over half of the hands went up. So with Slush, what we did, we did a cultural revolution when it comes to entrepreneurship. We changed the mentality, the attitude towards startups. Two years ago, I was lucky enough to meet uh, your prime minister, Abe, actually here at this uh, event. And then, you know, I was there in the room together with, I think, 40 or so uh, Japanese people wearing dark suits, and I was wearing a red hoodie. So, of course, what happened when Abe walked in, he came to me and I said, oh, hi, I'm Peter from Rovio. I'm here to help you with the third arrow in Abenomics the structural reform. Then he looked at me that, who is this crazy guy? <laughs> so you can't like see the theme here. And then, uh, then, I, said, uh, then uh, I was lucky enough that uh, Miki Tanisan was standing next to me and explained that, oh, these Rovia guys are a bit crazy, but they're doing very interesting things. And uh, then uh, what we actually decided to do was that, okay, why don't we 
bring slush to Japan. So last year we organized Slush Asia uh, together with 300 Japanese students, volunteers, young people. And we're told you can't do that in Japan because, I mean, if they don't have gray hair, they can't be trusted. You know, they're young people. And we didn't believe that, so we did it anyway. 3,000 people showed up. Fantastic event. Uh, all about startups and, uh, again, startups talking to other startups, entrepreneurs meeting other entrepreneurs, Japanese, young people, old people. And it was very successful. And we were told that it's impossible. But again, after the event, these 300 Japanese students know that they can walk on water. They know that they can change Japan. So what we're doing now, with, uh, together with Slush and uh, young Japanese people, we're building a new Brave Japan. So when we come back in a couple of years, it's going to be very different. And I was very happy to hear now uh, when Miki Tanisan said that now we have Nest here. It's like a home for entrepreneurs away from home. I think it's, it's really great to be back here in Japan and see all the energy, all the startups, all the entrepreneurship. And uh, with Slush, we're trying to do our little part to uh, bring more startups, bring more entrepreneurship here. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Impossible is nothing. All of you, you know, can also walk on water. If we can create Angry Birds in Helsinki, there's no reason why you can't, can't do that here in Tokyo or Osaka or Sendai or anywhere. So uh, thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.